Hello and welcome to YouTube's favorite comic book channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. want to remind everybody that we have a Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. You can join that at three different levels and get access to our videos early to offset the Kayfabe effect. We'd be the first one to track down these uh, comics that can be hard to find and go up in price quickly. At the King Kayfaber level, you get access to all of our videos early and the recording session, which we appreciate. Kind of the third brain in the room, if you will. So check that out. See which level fits best for you. We are also promoting Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July. The last Saturday in July, we ask our audience to grab their doubles, grab their uh, comps if they are creators, grab some good comics, and go to your local lending, little lending library and put those comics in there. Let's try to grow some new readers. This is the second year in a row that we are doing this. Think of it as an extra free comic book day, and we know that readers use those libraries. So let's turn them on to comics and see if we can't uh, keep this comic book audience growing. All right, Ed, we are back from Heroes, and uh, I met a hero of mine at Heroes this year, John Workman. That was awesome. We know him, probably a lot of the audience knows him as a letterer, but he was also the first art director of Heavy Metal Magazine, one of the huge influential moments in American comics history, and he's also done a ton of artwork. You know, these... Uh, these letterers, they are designers, they are artists, even if they don't always draw the comics. But in John Workman's case, he's done quite a bit. And he has this Ashcan mini comic zine. It's a living document, man. It's like the third or fourth edition with yes. extra pages. And he just keeps adding to his legacy like within those pages. So he sells us at cons. But when you go to a comic convention and, he, and he's a guy who has a table, he might have a couple dozen, a hundred of these, uh, you know, at the ready. And it's, it's worth scooping up, man. 100%. His work, as it says, over 40 years of comics and drawings, um, man, he is a living art history of comics. So I, I think he's, uh, printing these up on the bubble jet at home. I think he is. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It is. It is definitely. I love this idea that like these artists are able to self-publish, you know, at whatever age, whatever level of experience, and to uh, present their stories in the way they want them to be presented. It's very inspiring to me. We got started in production department in D.C., uh, quickly went to, to the new venture of heavy metal and was with them for a number of years, five, seven years, something like yeah, that. Yeah, seven-year stint. And you can see, like, some of his resume. D.C., Marvel, First, Pacific, Deluxe, Eclipse, Image, Dark Horse, Apple, Harris, Tops, Disney guy's been around ed yes sir i'm sure he's forgotten more than i know solid artwork uh it does come from that it's that glamour puss alex raymond stan drake kind of style where he's probably taking models doing a little autograph projecting uh to me that's a liberating thing man like to the people who who don't necessarily you know have have the chops to do it straight from full imagination like the projector it could be your friend if you can turn it to your own style. Yeah. Um, this may end up being a thumbnail. <laughs> this yeah. is one of those images, like, I just, even staring at it now, it's it's kind of freaking me out. But it's a really cool zine. We've looked at some stuff like Mike Allred's Vault, where you're going through just his archives, but seeing notes on what you're actually seeing. And that's what Workman has created here. So pretty much everything that's in here is annotated by Workman to let you know what it is. And man, it's all over the place. Inking Gene Colon. Um, there are logos and things. Babe Ruth drawn with a computer mouse. So you really get a chance to see, like, this is a comic strip he drew that Bob Kane was writing at the time. And I think I think he just inked it. Like, like did? Is, oh yeah, yeah, just the inks. Yeah, you're right. Written and drawn by Bob Kane. Doesn't it inks look by like Workman? Doesn't it look like Tim Hensley? It does. Yeah, it does. Very strange. Uh, but that's what's great about, you know, digging into an artist like this. And especially whenever the artist is the guy writing this, you really get a chance to see stuff that even if you were a fan of John Workman and you've collected some of his higher profile work, you probably haven't aren't aware of everything that's in here. And uh, I love it. I wish that more artists would do this. Whenever we get one of these, I feel like I always say the same thing as I wish more artists would do this. Totally. This is fun because he it's two inkers on display. Uh, I should have have my copy in hand, but I don't. Uh, so like he inked the top piece and then you get to see what his inking looks like with like somebody deaf to fan. He, do you see, do you see the name? Bob Smith. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and these pages are very dense. So most of them feature more than one excerpt. Yeah. And the little addendum pieces that he put it is, is crucial. Like this is very much, you know, I think it's the first thing he did like, like digitally. Yeah. With a Wacom tablet. Yeah. And you could, and you could tell. So, so it, like at this point you don't need the, uh, 
the uh, artograph projector like you could just import photos and fucking trace them shits off but you got to do it with style you know yeah also oddities right like plastic man this was an article done for amazing world of dc comics this is another inks by bob smith but i mean like this is probably workman in the staff at dc comics supplying whatever they need in terms of production i mean he drew some of the iconic heavy metal spot illustrations we will get there this video is brought to you by the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. You can join at three different levels, get early access to our videos to offset the Kayfabe effect, and at the King Kayfabe level, you get access to all of our videos early and the recording session live. It is also brought to you by the books that we make. My latest self-published book, True Crime Funnies, is now available on my website, jimrug.com. I am actually having a summer sale offering up some of my past comics that have been unavailable online, including my Blacklight comic, Octobriana 1976, my Wrestling Zine, a collection of wrestling art and covers that I have done over the years, as well as uh, screen prints and out-of-print zines and mini-comics like Rambo 3.5, while supplies last. Ed Piscor's upcoming books include the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus. You see the cover proof here. This is going to be a beautiful book. Over 500 pages, including 140 extra pages, plus all of the Hip Hop Family Tree strips. This will be in time for the holidays this year, and it'll be the book of the holidays. There's also an upcoming X-Men Grand Design trilogy collection. All three volumes of X-Men Grand Design coming out later this year from Marvel in one handy volume. These have gone in and out of print, so if you need X-Men Grand Design in your life, and you do, that is the easiest way to pick that one up. Pre-order it now. And Red Room Crypto Killers... Number one, this is the start of the third and final season of Red Room. These are coming out now monthly, so get those on your pull list. Let your comic shop know that you want to subscribe to Crypto Killers. And issue number three, which is coming out next, has a backup featuring a new set of characters that Ed will be working on for the foreseeable future. So could be a uh, great rock key to add to your collection. And now back to our video page from an Archie story written, penciled, and lettered by John Workman. Yeah, I think it didn't go. Like, like he did as a submission or something. And Archie is funny, dude, because, like, we did Archie strips in, in art school. Uh, several of our teachers were Archie guys. And uh, when I submitted my pages, they literally said that the, the figure work is too good. Like, it has to be much more rigid, much more stiff. That's so ridiculous. And and to be honest, I, I <laughs> it bet makes you, total sense, I, doesn't it? I like, bet you we talk to these guys, like they don't know who Harry Lucy is. Oh man, you break my heart when you say that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean they're 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 goobers, man. So I happen to have some John Workman in my collection, and uh, thought I would include, you know, some of these references. You see this BJ butterfly strip here. This is how it appeared in Wild Things, which was a. Uh, it's very odd because it says number two in a two issue micro series, but I actually have three, three copies of this or, you know, three issues of this. But the first two are all workmen. And you can see, you know, this is the printed version of it, at least in Wild Things going oversized where you can really appreciate kind of the uh, the line work, the detail, you know, the lines a little more lively whenever you see them printed large. But another benefit of owning your own work is that you do get to print it in these different places, right? You know, this is first appeared in Heavy Metal, but then is collected in Wild Things and then put out in his own little art book here. Um, Cindy, this is a, an adult comic. That is issue five. So there's your cover for Cindy. And you can see his great signature on quite a few of these pieces over time. There's Cindy number one. Off okay, cam, I just want to see what kind of insertion we might see. <laughs> in here, man. Let's... Oh, so so it's real photo collage. Like he's taking full photographs and stuff. Yeah, and uh, just like using high contrast xeroxes and things. Yeah, very much an interesting multimedia artist in that approach. Yeah, and you know I think what it, it shows the designer. Yeah, totally. Like like he might you know gun gun to the head draw this in my sketchbook. He might not have like the sharpest fucking skills, but like he figures out a way to use whatever ability he has to make good comics effective comics there were a few of those panels uh they remind me of someone like a pete marisi because there is a history of guys who use photo reference highly yeah and you can almost see it's black white or it's the gray crosshatch that this was, is a, a okay. nice detail too where we're getting to see a piece reproduced at original size so you can see the way this is collaged like that's the piece but uh pretty good to uh like as a kid this is what i needed to see 
You know, I needed to right. see this artwork at original size to understand, like, yeah, you drop bigger, it'll be a little forgiving whenever you reduce it in size. And, and it lets you know about hatching a little bit. Like, at the time when we were kids trying to get in the game, like, you don't hatch for it to look nice on the original. Right. You got to give a little space because it's going to reduce and it could close up the lines and become fully black. This is pretty uh, eye-opening that, that he would be a part of, like, a important kind of spot illustration yeah a cover for a dust jacket of a hardbound book published oh, by dc comics even that yeah like that's that's a that's an exceptional job yes to get this is a really disturbing piece if you guys want to read it at home you know pause the video but about child abuse and uh i see almost shades of kevin nolan it's interesting to see kind yeah. of the um what i assume are similar tools similar approaches on some of these artists but you get a collection like this is an illustration a piece of illustration ad art uh, a bit different than the rest of the art that we're seeing. One thing you do see a lot of, girls. Yeah, yeah, that's his, that's his deal, man. Definitely uh, into the pinup side of this stuff. This piece from Thunder Agents. So also just working with a whole bunch of different publishers over the course of his career. And always with attention to the lettering. Always very sharp. You know what's interesting, too, is through all the stuff that we're looking at in here, he hasn't even arrived at his recognizable John Workman lettering style. Like, that's pretty by the numbers house style type lettering to, to a large extent. It, it, it's almost like the something gets unlocked with uh, his Simonson collabs. Yeah, it's interesting. You wonder if Simonson is responsible for some of the Workmanisms. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there, there is kind of a font to it. Because, like, this is, a, this is a Workmanism of, like, you take the panel border away. Mm-hmm with the bubble, which is pretty freaking sharp, you know? Like, there wasn't many dudes who were doing that. I wonder if that's something he innovated. It's a great idea because, one, it, it kind of carries you from panel to panel, but by using the gutters, it actually gives you a little bit more space to leave the artwork alone. Yeah. Which, you know, that some looks, of these verbose comics, like, you got to figure out places to get that extra lettering in. Yeah, that looks like he was he was solving some problems. Yeah. This is neat. This is his pencils. Al Williamson inking over top. Super tight. Like, you could see that, you know, all the facility is there. And yeah. look at that. Dude, how many times have you seen these, man? I didn't know those were John Workman pieces, but there, but there you have it. Yeah. Promo and ad art, you know, like, that's what you get when you have a, uh, a guy like John Workman on your staff. Whenever you need this stuff produced, jack of all trades. Uh, I think this strip is really attractive. You know, it's such a clean series of panels in there. That was for a black and white magazine. Doesn't say what it was, so don't know if that was actually published or not. But a very sharp series of panels, in my opinion. And uh, even some blue lines. So one of the benefits of printing this yourself on your inkjet yeah. is that you can have touches of color and uh, you're not being penalized or being charged full color you know, for offset book, printing. Yeah for uh, one or two pages where you want to put some color in. And also, like, if you're printing these yourself, because I do see cartoonists that'll do this, you know, they'll print out 20 of these for their for a show or whatever, it allows you to do updates. It allows you to keep your quantities in something that makes sense, you know, if, if this is just kind of like your business card. And at four bucks, you know, like, this is practically giving this, this stuff away. Absolutely. Think about how much a printer cartridge costs. Plus, I love that he's DIY and, like folding and stapling and and yeah like like it's, it's, it doesn't have face trim or not so like he's making zines you know yes like that's punk rock shit i love it and you know i would say people watching this video you're going to comic conventions go see these letters because he has some cool stuff at his table go see these colors you know steve olaf was set up at heroes and you don't always think of them first when you're thinking of like i want to go see this artist or that artist these guys just as much craftsman as your artist for, that you're fans of, but also like they're going to have cool stuff there that you're not going to see anywhere else. It's true, and and uh, furthermore, when you go to a convention, like why would you buy some hack issues of some goofy comic that you could get your, at your shop? Like get the one of a kind things that the artists and the writers and the letterers and the colors are uh, are bringing that are unique to their own deal. And a guy like Workman or Steve Olaf, these are guys that have been around for decades. Like, they're also 
man, they know comics history. Like you can go talk stories with these guys and uh, really come away with a rich experience from it. It's true. Good to go. I am. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. Cartoonist K Fabe Comic Book Christmas in July is the last Saturday in July. We are stuffing those free little lending libraries in town. You see them in your neighborhood. Uh, we are stuffing them with comics, uh, be it doubles from your collection. If you're a cartoonist, comp copies of your own printed works and or take 20 bucks to the comic shop, hit the dollar bin and pull out some goodies for uh, these free little lending libraries. We have to keep this culture going. And uh, the only way that you could do that is by increasing comic book readership. So uh, make sure you participate and make sure you tag us online in any kind of photos of those cool little lending libraries with your books in them. Uh, it was a really, really fun initiative that we started last year. It's the second annual Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July. Uh, so we want to uh, double those numbers from last year. The Patreon is where you mitigate the Kayfabe effect. Uh, we share videos before anybody else sees them to our patrons. Three different levels. Choose the one best for you. Uh, but if you're a King Kayfaber, you're getting all the videos and you're hanging out with us in the in the uh, chat room right now, man. we got about three dozen people cold chilling in there right this second. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make because we are working cartoonists. So coming up uh, this year is going to be Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus. I'm presenting this to you as the coolest Christmas present money can buy. Uh, it's going to be coming out in October, so plenty of time for you to get it as a gift ahead of time. Uh, we just got these, uh, this is like uh, printer proof to take a look at, at how the gold is going to print on uh, on the books. Collecting all four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree, uh, going to add 140 pages of additional content to that book to make it a very unique, special presentation. I uh, hope you guys support this book. Uh, it's the best book I ever made. Uh, X-Men Grand Design is going to be another holiday effort that you're going to be able to get your hands on for the X-Men fan in, in your life. It's going to come out in November. It's going to include all of my X-Men Grand Design comics. We're calling it the X-Men Grand Design Trilogy trade paperback. But some of those volumes are out of print. Bringing them back in print this way. And the current focus, Red Room Crypto Killers, is the, the latest, greatest series of Red Room comics. Uh, Crypto Killers 1 is on the stands Two should be out any time now, but I encourage you very much to uh, order Red Room Crypto Killers 3 because uh, the focus of my daily strip that I've been working on, uh, those characters are going to be uh, introduced pretty much in uh, the back pages of Red Room Crypto Killers number 3 in a pretty fun backup uh, story. So make sure you put that on your pull list. That's a, that's a, that's a hot key. Jimmy, what do you have? My latest book, True Crime Funnies. I have self-published this. It features three short stories. One, a traditional crime comic featuring a rookie narc cop, possibly in over his head, plus two wrestling stories, uh, including Andy Warhol's Adventures in the Squared Circle. I am posting these on my website for the first time this Saturday, June 24th. I'm going to have a summer sale, so you can get True Crime Funnies there. You can also get some of my past bibliography, including my Blacklight comic, Octobriana 1976. First time I'm offering that outside of the Kickstarter online. Uh, I will also have zines and things there, like this wrestling zine, collecting my wrestling art, uh, including covers and commissions and just things from my own personal collection. Uh, I'll have things like Rambo 3.5. I'm going to have screen printed posters, black light posters. Um, some of the quantities are very limited. Some of these books I only have one copy of. So check it out June 24th. Uh, get there early to make sure you get the books that you want. And you can join me on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg where you can see my latest comics. A couple other ways to support the channel, Jimmy. What are they? Subscribe to the Cartoonist KFAB newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist KFAB t shirts merchandise, mugs, hats, fanny packs. I almost wore my fanny pack to Heroes, Ed. Uh, stickers and more at our spread shop. That link is under this video. All good ways to support the channel. Given those marching orders, we'll be on our way. Make more comics.